Bayern Munich have just beaten Barcelona 2-0 at home in the Champions League. It was a really fun game and a game between two very different teams stylistically. So let's just jump in, have a look at the board and see what was going on on the field. So here's the teams as they were set up. Let's start by talking about how each team was trying to attack. So we'll start with Barcelona because they're a little bit more uh, obvious, I think. So let's start off by drawing our favorite lines. So we've got the half spaces here, the wide spaces here, central space here, and then another half space and a wide space. Now, what we're gonna see from Barcelona is they're dangerous players are uh, Rafinha and Dembele on either side and then Lewandowski obviously the number nine here so what we're going to see from Barcelona is they're going to try and get into these sorts of areas they're going to try and get their wide players isolated 1v1 the fullbacks here and try and get behind them and once they do that they're just going to try and find these balls into the box to Lewandowski and what you'll see the team behind them filling these spaces so you can see you've got a player in the wide area player in the half space Lewandowski in the central space and then behind them everyone's going to fit into these different channels so what you're doing is you're spreading your players out you're giving them decent positioning but that's the general idea get the ball to your wide players and they can hit Lewandowski or alternatively just come in and create problems themselves now Bayern Munich have been trying a very different approach under Julian Nagelsmann this season and it's an approach which is not like Barcelona so it's not about this spacing using width necessarily but actually a lot more about getting players into central spaces and attacking from there. So what we've seen a lot from them this season is a setup like this. So a lot of players in central areas here, they have a double pivot so they can press quite comfortably. Um, they've often had a player in this left half space and they've left that wide channel here for Davis to, to come into and their back four then becomes a bit of a back three. But a lot of this then is quite different to what we're seeing from Barcelona because if we look at those channels, rather than having everyone spread out in different channels, you can see you're getting a lot more of these uh, of the, this congestion in the middle. And the idea is, is that you attack with a pace, you get the ball into these areas and you can generate sp space and, and attack from there. And if you lose the ball, then you all fall on the ball because you're all quite narrow. It's quite easy to do. And the idea then is you can win the ball back in these, these counter press moments, win the ball back quickly, cause problems for the opposition because the opposition are all in a defensive structure and they've all fallen apart and then try and get these, these sorts of goals. Now, it is worth saying that this is very similar to a Red Bull style of football, but actually Bayern Munich are introducing certain ideas into their approach, which is slightly different. So we've already talked about how Alfonso Davis here is doing what we call pinning, so keeping the fullback on this side further across. Uh, and we've seen, again, the, the player dropping into this half space here, sitting back a little bit so that when these two strikers push forward, the back line has to drop back and you're then creating space around here. So there are ideas of positional play there, but rather than having it really spread apart, as we've seen with a lot of the classical stuff, the, the Pep Guardiola stuff, this is a lot more about still attacking through the middle. And I've got a really nice viz here to show you what it looks like in practice. So on this viz in front of me on the board that was made for me by Marum from The Athletic, I've got all of Bayern Munich's chances from the season, how they were generated. And the thing to notice with these chances is just the narrowness of where all of these chances are coming from. On this side of the pitch, there's just nothing really coming from this area. There's no chances created from wide areas. There is a little bit of space here. Um, you can see a few chances going in from the box, but the majority of chances are coming from this central space here. And that matches up very much with what we've just seen on the tactics board. So if we go back there, you can see that the attacking player is dropping into the left half space, so you're not getting as much generation from this area. But on the right hand side, you are seeing those players pull out in this sort of area. Now, Julian Nagelsmann did set things up slightly different for this game, because usually this season we've seen Sadio Mane as the number nine. We've usually seen either Muziala or Sane playing in this left half space area here. Uh, we've seen Thomas Muller play as the 10 and then generally pull out wide into this right area. And then whoever's playing in the right area just pulling up alongside Mane in this sort of area here. But we actually saw quite a different setup. We saw Thomas Muller used as a false nine here. Sadio Mane then pulled across into the left-hand side. We had Sane over on the right-hand side and then we had Muziala in the middle. Now, the reason why this was done is because of these two players. So the most dangerous players for Barcelona, Rafinha and Dembele. So Julian Nagelsmann clearly didn't want these two dangerous players to get 1v1 against fullbacks. So he put his more dangerous, quick pressing players in those wide areas just to help out there. And that meant that we had Thomas Muller and Muziala in the middle. And that meant that rather than actually having Davis pushing up forward, which we've seen a lot in Bundesliga games, actually he was a little bit more conservative. He sat a little bit deeper, again, just to keep an eye on Rafinha. 
So these are two very different teams. And we've got Barcelona trying to get the ball in wide areas to their dangerous wide players, and then Bayern Munich trying to get the ball through the middle. So Xavi, the Barcelona manager, knew that what he had to do to stop Bayern was to stop them being able to get the ball and attack directly through the middle. And the way that he did that was actually a little bit counterintuitive. Rather than just sitting deep and congesting the central area, actually what he did was that when Bayern were trying to build up, he pushed his players forward into a really aggressive high press. And what they did is they went from their 4-3-3 into something closer to a 4-4-2. So Gavi, who's one of the outside centre midfielders, pushed up and he was able to go up against Lucas Hernandez, the centre back here. Rafinha goes up against Davis over on this side. And what you end up then with is pretty much a man for man press. And the general idea is this because you are stopping Bayern from being able to build up nicely and get the ball into these dangerous areas, you're putting them under a lot of pressure in the build up. Actually, eventually, the only thing that Bayern could do was either lose the ball, in which case Barcelona could counter, counter attack, or they were hitting the ball long. Now, having these two players now isolated against their centre-backs in Muller and Musial, it may seem like a bit of a gamble on the part of Barcelona, but we've already said that Thomas Muller is a false nine. He's not a traditional nine. So in the air against a centre-back, he's probably going to come out worse. And Musiala is not a particularly great aerial presence either. And so the general gamble that Xavi played in the first half was just going really aggressive in the high press, causing problems for Bayern. All that Bayern then could do is go long and the end that ended up Barcelona just hoovering up the ball and being able to build up themselves. The other thing that Barcelona did really well was they were able to soak up transition play from Bayern, again, because of their high press. And so what would happen is that if the press was broken, Barcelona made sure that they got back into these sorts of situations where they were covering really nicely in deeper areas. And again, just stopping Bayern from being able to do what they do really well, which is attack at speed. They're just gonna sit in here. The two wing backs are able to drop in alongside the midfield, again, make this five-man midfield cause problems. And in the end, then Bayern are having to do something that they're not particularly great at, which is try and break down uh, a low block in defense. And because of that, in the first half, actually, Barca probably had the better of the game. If you look at the XG plot, you can see that Bayern barely created anything and Barca had a few really good chances and that took them to the half-time whistle and it was nil-nil, Barca probably being the better team at that point. Now, at halftime, things changed considerably and two things changed in particular. The first thing was that Barca's pressing just dropped right off. And this meant that Bayern, in their build-up, just had a lot more time on the ball. They could play the ball around a little bit more without any pressure from Barcelona. So Barca now sitting in a little, little bit more of a passive block and Bayern able to move the ball around well. So this gave Bayern the upper hand a little bit because in the previous half, they hadn't been able to set themselves and get into these dangerous situations that they like to create. So that was the first thing that changed. The second thing that changed was that Julian Nagelsmann recognized that actually trying to go super narrow through the middle and trying to do these intricate build-up plays just wasn't working against Barca. And so he tried to change things up a little. And what he did was he actually started adopting the approach that the Barcelona front line were doing, which is pinning fullbacks and generating a lot of space. So Sadio Mane pushing out really wide on one side, Sane pushing out wide on the other. And what this does is this means that you pull your fullbacks across and then you generate a much more space for these two centre backs to cover. And this shows up really nicely in the goal, these two things. So Bayern have the ball, they're able to build up. At this point, Masrawi's come on for Pavard. And what we see then is Masrawi coming inside, pulling Dembele in here. This generates space for Sané to come in. Musiala comes across as well. And what we get then is this player comes up here. We see the centre-backs pulling across as well. And you can just see so much more space now in the central areas. So Bayern are still trying to attack through the middle, but they're generating a lot more space by just pulling wide in these two areas. And what's going to happen is the ball's going to come in here to Sané. Sané's going to play it back to Masrai. He's going to play it to Musiala. And then they're going to just attack this space. Thomas Muller is going to pull across here onto the other centre-back. And again, there's just space here in this area that's just open to be attacked. So we've got a lovely camera here because the camera at the Allianz Arena is an overhead cam, so you can get a really nice look at this. So this is the situation from when Bayern scored the second goal in particular. So that's the one which really shows up these, these tendencies. So Bayern are playing this way down the field. This is Upamecano with the ball. This is Masrawi pulling Dembele across, generating space in here for Leroy Sané. This is Musiala pulling across here. And then you've got Muller in this area here between the two centre-backs. So when the ball comes into Sané over here, he receives the ball and you can see Sadio Mane on this side, 
Leroy Zane on this side and just pulling that back line right apart. All of this space now in the middle for Bayern to actually attack. What we're going to see is the ball coming back to Masrawi and the ball is then going to go into Musiala. Musiala gets the ball and turns. You can see now Thomas Muller has pulled the centre backs across. There's now an acre of space between the, the full back here and the centre back here. And this is the area then that Musiala is going to attack. And you can see Sane coming with him as well. So they've generated that space and now they're going to attack it. They're now going to get really narrow so that when the ball goes across, you can see here now, this is Musiala plays the ball into this space here. And just, you can see how much space they've created in this moment. So the ball comes through to Leroy Zane, who runs through and scores the goal. So this was very much a game of two halves. In the first half, Barca definitely had the upper hand. They generated the better chances. They were able to press Bayern into oblivion at times. But in the second half, things changed. Barca's pressing dropped off and Bayern were able to generate space in the middle that they could then attack and it caused problems. And as a result, Bayern ended up winning 2-0. Xavi will be disappointed. It was a great game and it really sets that group up to be fun in the rest of the Champions League. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. Not to mention, it's all ad-free. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.